Welcome everyone to another episode of AppSec 101. My name is Andrew and I work in marketing here at Fortify. And I'm pleased to be joined today by Katie Crabtree. And Katie has been at Fortify for over six years now. Um, she has a lot of experience. Um, she actually started on the customer support team, talking to customers every day. And then about three years ago, she moved over to the product management side of things, handling uh, pricing, licensing, special programs. And more recently, she has moved to working with the products directly. So Katie is based in South Florida and her husband is also in the AppSec industry. And she told me that you know they spend a lot of their days talking about their kids, but also talking about AppSec since they're both in the industry. So I thought that was fun to hear. And Katie, um, welcome aboard. Glad to have you on today. Yeah, thanks. I'm excited to be talking to you and looking looking forward to talking more about the OWASP Top 10. Yeah, exactly. Let's get started and dive into that. So for those that are new to the industry or haven't heard of the OWASP Top 10 before, what is the OWASP Top 10? Yeah, so um, the OWASP Top 10 is the Open Web Application Security Project, and it's focused on improving uh, security of software. And so a number of application security firms and industry experts actually provide input to be able to identify what the top 10 most critical security risks are that threaten web applications today. And that's how we come up with the OWASP top 10. Okay. And Katie, I've been working in data security for just about four years now, but I've heard OWASP and the OWASP top 10 mentioned all the time. I mean, I hear it at shows and I mean, I, I get emails all the time that mention it. You see white papers. So why is it that we hear this term, the OWASP top 10, so often? So in security, we talk about it a lot because we use it to help identify the, the top critical risks. And then we use it to help prioritize and minimize the risks for our applications. Okay. So when, when we talk about minimizing risk for applications, how does the top 10 actually get determined? Yeah, so like I mentioned before, you know, OWASP has a number of application security firms and industry experts that provide input into forming the top 10. And they're going to look at four different things. So they're going to look at how prevalent is the threat and how often are we seeing it, you know, in applications today? Um, how exploitable is it? So how easy is it for me to uh, actually find that vulnerability and, and exploit it? Um, how likely can it be detected? So when we look for these vulnerabilities and then look at these risks, um, how, how easy is it going to be for us to find them? And then what is the impact? So they're going to look at the impact on both the business side as well as the technical side. So on the business side, they're going to look at things like, do we have financial um, impacts if, if something were to happen uh, and, and that threat was to get um, exploited? Um, and then, you know, what's our reputation uh, impact? Are we going to be all over the news if we get exploited in this application? Um, because, you know, we're, we're trying to avoid that. We don't want to be that, that company in the news when um, we've had a breach. So, so what are the impacts on the business side? And then we're going to look at what are the impacts on the technical side? Does it break the application? Um, is the application no longer able to do what it needs to do. Uh, so, so all of those things are kind of looked at, um, and then that's how they determine what the top 10 vulnerabilities uh, are or what the top 10 risks are. So why is this important for a company trying to secure their applications? Why should they be concerned with the OWASP top 10? So, I mean, when it comes to writing code for applications, I mean, we, we obviously want everything to be secure, and we want to avoid against any threat that's out there, but you know, we, we have to start somewhere. And so the OWASP top 10 is really good because it can give developers a foundation of the top security issues that they're they're gonna wanna try and prevent against, right? At a minimum, you know, we gotta try and prevent against these, these top 10 issues. Um, and at a higher level, right, it's gonna help an organization to kind of prioritize what vulnerabilities need to be fixed when they're found. So, you know, across the board, a company is gonna use this to uh, narrow down what they're, what they're focused on. Obviously, there's there's a wide range of things they can focus on, but this is going to kind of give them guidance into what they should be starting with, and then um, they can expand from there. Okay. Yeah, I, I like how you said, you know, we have to start somewhere. This gives us some guidance, kind of a baseline where we can start. How can application security teams detect the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities? Once they know what they are, 
how do they actually go about detecting them in their environments? Yeah, so Fortify has application scanning solutions that can detect a wide array of security vulnerabilities, um, including the OWASP top 10. So, um, you know, they're, it's going to give you the ability to look for those specific risks in your application. And then in addition, it's going to also allow uh, someone to filter um, down to the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities when they are found in the application and look closer at those. Okay, so now I have a good understanding about the OWASP POP10, what it is, why it's important. Let's dive a little deeper now and actually talk about the OWASP POP10. So what are the OWASP POP10 risks? And then let's talk about them. Yeah, so the OWASP POP10 risks are injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, XML external entities, which we also call XXE, um, broken access control, security misconfiguration, cross-site scripting, which we also call XSS, insecure desterilization, using components with known vulnerabilities, and then insufficient logging and monitoring. Okay, great. Uh, let's dive into some of those a little bit more. We, we don't have time to go over all 10, but maybe let's start with injections because I know that's a popular one. Yeah, so an injection is going to allow a hacker to input something malicious um, that will cause the application to behave unexpectedly, um, right? So just do something it's not supposed to do. And this, this can lead to things like the application executing unintended commands um, or providing access to data without proper authorization. And so a hacker who's leveraging a SQL injection vulnerability could do that in the login functionality. And that would allow them to see something like, everyone's username and password or everybody's credit card information or everybody's email address or anything really that they're not supposed to have, right? That's the, that's the impact, right? We, we, could see, we could see that they get data um, that they really aren't supposed to have. Okay. And I'd also like to touch on sensitive data exposure. That's a, that's a big one for me. Um, I mean, you, you hear in the news about, you know, these big companies that have a data breach and you hear about ransomware attacks and you know sensitive data exposure it's a big one could you touch on that a little bit yeah of course i mean sensitive data is obviously the data that we're trying to protect against right for for you and i andrew we don't want our credit card information out there for the world to see um and so when we don't have enough protection around that data um it's it's easier for it to be compromised and so um it gives somebody access to something that they shouldn't have and, and like i said you know if that's our credit card information well hey we don't we don't want them to have that so we we want to take the measures to protect against the data that is sensitive and so for we're not taking those extra precautions like doing things to encrypt the, encrypt the data or um, use strong ciphers, then that data becomes easier to expose. And again, that's, that's not a good thing, right? We don't want anybody having access to that. So um, we, we want to make sure that our, our data is protected um, so that we're not, we're not that company in the news where we've been breached um, and that data is that data's out there for people to see. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to see your company in the headlines uh, as, as a victim of a data breach. Um, well, next up, let's talk a little bit about cross-site scripting. You mentioned it's also known as XSS. Yeah, so cross-site scripting is when a hacker is basically going to trick an application into supplying another user with something malicious or malicious script that's going to get executed uh, in the user's browser. So, you know, if I went to a web page and a hacker had executed a cross-site scripting attack, um, I could do anything from just give me a pop-up that, you know, says something funny to actually stealing my session data um, and giving the hacker access to kind of be me um, and do things that they're not supposed to do. You know, when I think about cross-site scripting, uh, it, it's kind of scary. Um, what yeah. what are some some things we can do to maybe prevent those types of attacks? Yeah, so I mean, the biggest thing is just being able to detect them, right? We want to be able to detect those attacks, and then we want to be able to remediate those as quickly as possible. Um, and the OWASP top 10 obviously gives us that foundation of what it's important to fix. Um, but if you're using Fortify to kind of scan your, your application and you find a cross-site scripting vulnerability, it's just important that, that that vulnerability gets fixed so that the hacker doesn't have access to be able to trick that application to doing something that it's not supposed to do. So anything we can do to remediate it um, is, is going to be important. And, and the great thing about OWASP is, um, you know, it does give guidance on, on kind of how to prevent against it. Yeah. 
Katie, one term I've heard so often since I started here at Fortify is shift left, right? And it's this yep. idea of, you know, taking these security measures earlier in your development life cycles. And I think that applies here as well, because we want to detect these vulnerabilities as early as possible, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we want to detect them as early as possible. We want to prevent against them as much as possible. So yeah, shifting left gives us the ability to do that. And, um, you know, when we when we do find these vulnerabilities and we we see that we can, uh, you know, see that they're in our application, we obviously want to get them fixed so that, you know, we, we don't, that doesn't become um, a bigger risk than, you know, we intend it to be. Right. Um, well, ju just to wrap things up here, I wanted to touch on one more vulnerability from the yep. OWASP top 10, and that is using components with known vulnerabilities. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's a good one, right? When when an application gets built, you know, so often we are now using open source components, right? We're not writing everything on our own custom. We're, we're using these open source components that are already written and contributed to openly. And so that does open up the possibility for vulnerabilities to be in those libraries or in those frameworks that we're using. And so um, when using those open source components, it's always possible um, that we're gonna see a vulnerability associated with them. So it's really important for us to, you know, obviously not use those libraries or those versions of libraries that have the vulnerabilities. And uh, so when we look for those, right, when we when we find those, it's, it's important for us to um, figure out how to use a different version. And, and that's not, you know, there's so many libraries out there that's easier said than done. And so Fortify offers open source scanning through Sonatype so that the components um, that do have vulnerabilities can be identified a little bit easier. Um, and then we can address and, and remediate those those issues that we're gonna find when we're, when we're looking at a component that has vulnerabilities that we know about. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad you touched on that. And, you know, open source, it's, it's convenient, right? But we also, yep. As you mentioned, just got to make sure we're using best practices when it comes to using these open source libraries because, you know, security is obviously first priority. And um, exactly. so I, I, I'm glad you brought that up um, with Fortify and, and Sonatype, right? Um, so we can make sure we're using these open source libraries securely. Yeah, of course. That's that's really important. We're seeing, you know, a lot a lot of applications are now using open source components, and so um, it's it's an important one for us to make sure that we're we are finding those vulnerabilities and we are remediating or you know finding those vulnerable libraries and we're we're upgrading to the next versions that that are not vulnerable because you know we we don't want to be um, using open source components that that are vulnerable or that that have issues in them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Katie, I want to thank you for joining me today on this episode of AppSec 101. Before we sign off, do you have any maybe last thoughts or maybe tips for any of our viewers uh, in their you know AppSec journeys going forward? Um, yeah, thanks, Andrew. It's it's been great talking to you and and talking more about the OWASP top ten. And you know, my advice with this is go out and and look more at the OWASP top ten. There's so many resources out there that we have access to, um, and and it's so so prevalent in the application security world today. So go take advantage of everything that's out there um, that you can use to learn about these vulnerabilities and how to prevent against them, and then how to find them and remediate against them when you do um, when you do see them in your applications to make sure you're staying secure. Absolutely. Yeah, so important to stay educated and like you said, take advantage of all these resources that we have. So Absolutely. Um, well, thanks, Katie. And, you know, thank you as well to our viewers for watching this episode of AppSec 101. If you liked this episode, please give it a like, leave a comment down below, and remember to subscribe to Fortify Unplugged for more AppSec videos. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.